Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome to this video. We're going to be discussing Hope Summers, the latest season pass card in Marvel Snap. If you're looking for a pixie based video, by the way, we're going to be releasing a dedicated pixie video tomorrow. So hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, so you can see the pixie video when it comes in to the subscription feed on YouTube. However, with Hope Summers, I can't wait to get uh, started on the conversation. We'll be talking about the season pass value. We'll be discussing Hope Summers and whether or not I think it's good. We'll also be discussing some decks and some gameplay highlights that I think really showcase the card and its capabilities. Abilities. So let's start from the top. Hope Summers is a 3-4 that gets a one additional energy if you play a card into her. Well, if you play multiple cards into her, she's going to get multiple points of energy for that next turn. So if you're able to zoom in and zoom out, you get the best of both worlds. Stuff like Nightcrawler, Kitty Pride, Jeff, Vision, they all benefit from uh, synergistic play with Hope Summers. And if that sounds familiar, because it's very similar to the Silky Move style decks that we were so used to during the Elsa heyday, and let's just say some of those might be making a bit of a comeback. Now, Hope Summers as a value proposition, uh, I mean, you can't argue it. Uh, the season pass is pretty cool for $10 American, which is, I mean, different for everyone in all different currencies. You are getting a Series 5 card that honestly is pretty good. Um, and uh, if you consider how much it costs to get 6,000 tokens for a Series 5 card, it's way more expensive than that if you're trying to buy a bundle or whatever, right? So it's worth noting the season pass does still have the premium mystery variant at 40, variants, resources all throughout. Uh, it's also worth noting that they added, for the first time ever, that's right, an emote to the season pass, which is pretty cool to see. So if you're interested in emotes and those type of uh, collectibles, then it adds value to what is already a pretty good card in Hope Summers. On the Snapchat, I gave her a rating of five stars. I thought this card was going to absolutely slap, and it didn't actually quite meet my expectations. It's much closer to a four star card. It's legit, but it's not meta breaking the way Loki or Miss Marvel would be. And it's definitely better than something like a Black Swan or Sebastian Shaw. Why would Black Swan not be as good? Why would Sebastian Shaw not quite be as good as Hope Summers? Well, it's it's apparent when we talk about the decks. Hope Summers has this wide gamut of applicability in a wide variety of archetypes. You feel like you can put it anywhere. And I actually did pretty much put Hope Summers everywhere in the deck uh, section we'll be talking about momentarily. This deck is very versatile. Because of that, it's very likely that there's gonna come a point in time where you're like, hey, damn, I can just play Hope Summers here and it's gonna work damn fine, right? So very applicable, very wide ranging, and that I think is a benefit. The effect of cheating energy is also extremely powerful in Marvel Snap. You have a limited number of turns, and if you can sneak out large cards early, hell yeah, that's advantages, right? So I mean, at the end of the day, I do think that Hope Summers is a strong card. I think that you can confidently get it. I think it's going to uh, continue to be a solid contender in the meta. And I think that we're only, of course, very early in its deck design period, where ultimately I think that it will be a staple in some formats because honestly, being able to reliably cheat out energy is incredibly powerful. There's almost no downside here. You just need the cards to play into it and then you get the bonus. So. I do think this card is very good. When talking about decks, you have to start at Hope to Move, the Silky Smooth style deck that became so famous and popular during the heyday of Elsa Bloodstone. Now, this was the particular version of the deck that I was playing, and we're like two or you know one or two cards off from what a lot of other creators and people were testing, right? And did it perform well? Like, yeah, it was fine, but I had some serious concerns over its true viability, considering that Elsa Bloodstone, Kitty Pride, and Hope Summers, while being synergistic, aren't necessarily as good as they used to be. You'll notice that Angela is no longer in this deck. Angela is just a shell of her former self and Kitty Pride never quite felt that great. Ultimately, this deck felt okay. The movement and the extra energy provided by, you know, Hope Summers into Spider-Man and Silks and Jeffs and stuff, it was nice. And maybe you snuck out Doctor Doom early, which allowed you to gain initiative for that Elias play on turn six. But like cards like Vision, for instance, if you think about the actual play lines, you do have Hope Summers, then you play a card on turn four, like the Iron Lad, and you're at five energy anyway. You just got an extra one to play the Kitty Pride and then move the Vision as well. So like... It often felt like you were just kind of playing Kitty Pride for free, which kind of was okay. It wasn't bad, but without Elsa and without the Angela and stuff like that, you didn't actually gain that much vertical power. It felt weaker than it should have. You had this energy, but you weren't actually generating much oomph with it. So I do think that the move style decks, while might need some additional refining, did underperform in my opinion. But again, decks are still being refined. And then on the Snapchat, I discussed a ramp style deck that used Rescue to kind of play on top of the Hope Summers with confidence to get out some big chunky boys. And uh, the deck was fun, I will say, but honestly, Rescue underperformed. It felt like, why play Rescue when you can play something like a Call Obsidian or 
was something that was just easier to get the value out of and uh i mean ultimately rescue was fine hope summers was fine legion was an absolute just stealer of cubes and of course dr doom odin always feels good but again ramp doesn't always feel that strong right it's just like okay you ramp into doom odin you're adding 10 power in each location but it's like is that even really enough like considering how vertical and how powerful a lot of these hella based decks are even tribunal like you can't compete with tribunal so ultimately i felt like ramp was lacking what it needed to be successful and i felt that this deck underperformed moving on here we went to surfer hopium right we started calling the hope decks hopium decks and uh this felt terrible honestly like the surfer base list did not feel great uh you still kind of need to run sarah because you need a backup right like you need a backup if you don't draw hope summers even if you do draw hope summers and you play sarah on top I mean, it's good. You got lots of energy, but you probably had lots of energy anyways, and you were probably going to play out your entire hand anyways. So it kind of felt like it was they were stepping on their own toes, and my testing with taking Sarah out felt really inconsistent, and it really compromised your burst turn six potential. So Hope Summers, it felt okay in a deck like this, but it did not feel like it was going to elevate Surfer in the way that I thought. I still have some other designs that I want to test, but I just simply ran out of time. Uh, we did try a Control Surfer Hopium style deck, which is a little different, focusing in on the use of Jean Grey and Brood to fill a location, Goose to control what cards can be played, Negasonic to munch on a card that might be trying to sneak out of that Jean Grey location. And ultimately it felt okay like again this actually felt a little better because the control element than the other deck which is focused on much more power centric plays but it just didn't feel that good it felt like surfer just needed a little more than a little bit of extra energy it gets that from sarah and once again in our testing when we cut sarah out it felt pretty terrible to not have sarah on turn five so I digress, still going to work on a surfer deck, but these are some starting points if you want to get a little creative. Uh, my absolute favorite deck, my favorite deck that featured uh, Hope Summers was this one here, and it might look familiar because it's the deck that I featured in my Galactus video uh, just this past weekend, and uh, honestly, it's one of my absolute favorite decks, and essentially, I took out Viper and I put in Hope Summers. It was that simple, and uh, I actually went 14 of 15 Infinity Conquest rounds with that deck. I only lost once in round five in three full runs of uh, Infinity Conquest, getting two new Infinity Borders with a deck like this here, adding Hope Summers. If you might, the deck I used had Viper, not Hope Summers. So I'm like, okay, the deck is good. I take Viper out, I add Hope Summers. What do we got? And it was good. It was still good. But what I realized, what I realized was that I think Hope Summers benefits from a deck that isn't necessarily Galactus. I think that if you have like an Annihilus, Darkhawk based disruption deck that allows you to play into Hope Summers while also getting the best of both worlds. If you play the goblins into Hope Summers, what happens is, is that essentially um, it's free real estate. You're getting additional energy while not occupying your side of the board. It's just like when you move, play move cards into it so you can move out of her. I mean, if you're playing goblins, she's it's just bouncing on the other side. The challenge with that, though, is if you're playing Hobgoblin and Greed Goblin onto uh, Hope Summers, that also means that you cannot play Galactus there because Hope Summers is there. So I tried cutting Galactus, but then if you don't draw Hope Summers, you now lose your Galactus line. So this deck kind of felt like it was at war with itself slightly as to what it was trying to do. Do I want the extra energy with Hope Summers playing the goblins in, or do I want to set up lines with Galactus? Ultimately, you know, playing it, piloting it, deck felt damn good. It just needed some practice as to how you're going to set up Galactus. And I often find myself playing, uh, you know, the Hope Summers on the left or middle to ensure that I can play Sentry on top, which allows me to play a Nihilus and still have a Galactus line on the right side with the use of the Void being kicked over. So you can get the best of both worlds, but it's just notable how that will ultimately play out. But honestly, I liked this deck a lot. Galactus is just an absolutely phenomenal archetype, and I'm just, I'm all in on Galactus right now. I think it's damn good. High Evo, I think, is a natural inclusion for a card like this, but it has to come at a cost. Like these Evo decks have been so, so tight. And what's nice, uh, what's nice about Hope Summers is floating energy at any point is super valuable. Like if you float an energy and that allows you to basically play on turn six infinite and the she hulk because if you play a card uh, if you play on top of uh hope summers on turn four and you skip turn five you actually have six energy on turn five which means you're you're basically getting your sheen off for free 
and you're getting your She-Hulk for free and your Infinoff for free on six turns, not needing magic. However, that felt too risky. So in this particular deck, which performed well, it was about just being, hey, I can play cards into Hope Summers and take that floated extra energy. Give me some more Cyclops Pew Pews and uh, Misty Knight procs and we're floating for Hulk anyways, right? So why not? And while we were playing this, we kind of started to realize like, hey, like Infinoff, like we're not actually using it that much because of Hope Summers, we're often floating enough that Hulk feels worth it. And that ultimately took us to debuff Hopium which was like okay if we're floating all this energy what happens if we cut the infinite and we play much more of this like this uh, attack based infinite uh, deck which utilizes scorpion it utilizes cyclops the thing spider woman trying to get that abomination down for free so you can play hulk and abomination as a combo play now this deck does not use magic because we're trying to essentially use hope summers to ramp out quick enough and do enough damage and float enough that you don't even need to skip turn six if you can cut that completely out of the uh the gameplay then all of a sudden you're not vulnerable to the snow guard hawks and the reality stones and the storms and all that kind of stuff right so the deck performed well it was fun and i, I do think that like on aggregate i don't think this deck will perform that great i think that it still has a couple problems that need to be sorted out the original evo deck's probably ultimately better but still it was fun and uh, I was able to steal a lot of cubes with it with that uh, surprise abomination play and uh, ultimately guys that takes me through the decks and uh You'll note that I do think the Galactus version was the best. I'm going to be working on a new Annihilus version as well. I know a lot of people are going to lean directly into the Silky Smooth style decks, but I don't think she actually stays here long. It just does not feel that good, especially with the Elsa Kitty Pride being as bad as they are. If Elsa gets buffed in a new upcoming patch, things change completely. If Elsa gets some additional love, then this deck becomes much more viable. But as of right now, it was not competing with the Hellos or the Tribunals or anything you're seeing in the meta. It just was not going vertical enough. But you can steal cubes from bots, I guess. Regardless, guys, Hope Summers, I'm all for it. I think the card is very strong. I think the Season Pass is probably going to be worth it. Um, it is a viable card. It is highly applicable to so many different archetypes. So if you have the 10 bucks to spare, I do think it's probably well spent on Hope Summers. It gets my seal of approval. With that being said, we have a nice allotment of gameplay highlights here available for you. I would be happy if you checked them out and let me know in the comments what you think of Hope Summers. I hope you enjoy these gameplay highlights. All right. I see an I see Jay suspect gameplay. I snap. <laughs> when you see a gamer named Jay with a suspect play like that, you snap. But then again, they skipped this turn. They got a non. I, I mean, listen, I for a second I thought Jay was a bot, but it's entirely possible Jay is not a bot. Now we're gonna focus on uh, Cyclops here. Just the hella gamer, yeah. With Hope Summers. Wow. There's a lot of excess power there. They've only discarded Blob. I think we have to magic. I think we have to magic. As much as I want to leech. Yeah, vision's huge for them. So we're going to win there. It's just a matter of competing here. We double skip. Their deck has no location correction. They'll have initiative. Okay, Doomers. Not a worry for us. Now they're holding initiative. Hulk, uh, sorry, the vault comes back. See, this attacks both locations, but we don't need to win both locations. And this loses to this. He always moves vision. They have Hella in hand. They got Blob. Four cards in hand. Hard left. Okay. 
There it is. Eight cubes. And see? Jay wasn't a bot. I told you guys. I told you guys Jay was not a bot. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right. We got the white hot room. We're going for it. We need to go for it. They're actually Thanos gaming though. We have to hope Summer's here. Hope Summer's Cyclops. I don't think we ever compete here though. They're definitely gonna not. Okay. They play Thanos down? Okay. Is Cyclops fine? They're going to play cards here, right? They play two stones here. Spider Woman's better. Yeah, I knew they were going to play stones. Okay. Does Thanos get huge, though? Do they actually complete him? No way they did it. Our deck likes all this extra energy, though. 10 power. Wow, we can dump our hand with two extra power? Jeff hasn't moved yet, though, has he? So we would just tie there? Maybe we hold back Misty Knight? Pass to play around leader? That's great advice. Let's float an extra power here. They can also move with the Space Stone and play. I, I would snap. I think we're going to win, but I want to see this game play out. But, like, we have <laughs> White Hot Room and Hope Summer's energy. Crazy. 10 power. And don't forget that Hulk gets a plus two as well. The challenge we have is they could shun Chi middle. It's very likely they're going to get Thanos to 20 power as well. However, if they do that, Hulk should gap. That's why I almost wanted to play Misty Knight to 1-1 one, one up here. Because they move Jeff. They play a card. Thanos pops off. If they didn't draw their stone, it's cursed, but they will certainly have their stone, right? Yeah, Jeff goes left. So it was prudent to not play Misty Knight. Yeah, so it's Blob plus a stone to make uh, Thanos a 20. Oh, Cull Obsidian! Oh, they didn't even make it! They're getting casseroled! Oh no! Disaster! I did not expect it to go that way at all! I mean, it is a high Evo deck with 10 energy on turn 6, so... Maybe that's expected, but wow, that was not what I expected. There's a lot of good cards down the pipeline. Truthfully and honestly. Like, I think Mockingbird's gonna be excellent. I think that uh, Red Hulk is good, and I think that War Machine's gonna be excellent. We have we have the combo of Hope Summers and Rescue. Let's see if it actually feels as good as it hope. I hope it does. Okay, we got some Limbo gameplay. Now we can actually take out Limbo. It's very notable. But do we actually choose to take out Limbo? They never expect Legion, right? But we also have Doom Odin here. Considering they just discarded an Infinaut, um, snapping on this is kind of gross, but we do have Dr. Doom Odin. We have the full combo. Nadolvalier left helps us pretty significantly as well. Why aren't I in the developer update video? I would love to be in the development update video. Um, I've never been invited. I suspect it's because I'm from Canada. Not that they hate Canadians or anything. I think it's literally just because I'm from Canada. And so, like, uh, you know, other people are closer to their physical proximity. You know what I mean? They're just nearby. 
Also, they hate Canadians. This is good, though. This is the combo we're after. We also have the option. We definitely have the option of trying to Legion Limbo. If they skip this turn or do anything weird, we can actually play Legion on top of a Nadalvalir. Or I don't even know how to say the word. Oh, they play Skill Obsidian down. We have extra energy. We have extra energy. It's it's probably just Doom here. We are attacking... Uh, Odin Doom is attacking three different locations. They have to play a card in the Dolvalier or we win. They play a card there. So Rescue does not actually get an additional proc. That's one kind of disadvantage to this setup. And it's a Nihilus. They send over the negative, but that's not enough. Can't move my cards. Can't move my cards. Um, we could change all the locations to Nadolvalir, which is actually kind of hilarious because we have four everywhere and we're likely to win as a result. Am I right? We probably lose here, though. We likely win here. Let's do it. Let's set it. This is a risk. If they play mid, they do play mid. We should be able to win mid. But I think we throw right, unfortunately. Wait, no, we don't. Wow, I did great math there. Oh, my gosh. So they're bringing the infinite. They're going to win mid. What do they play on the other side? Blade. That's not enough. We get the dub. There were so many ways to lose there. But also so many ways to win. This is where uh, Viper in this deck is so good. Anytime you have these situations. There seems to be a lot of excitement around uh, Cannonball to be honest with you. Man in the Moon. Thank you so much. Can we hope mid I guess? Hope mid into Green Gob? All these damn Jeffs. Even if Hobgob gets, uh, Green Gob gets stuffed. It's fine. We can still annihilate us here. They haven't moved either Jeff yet. Do this for the extra energy. Now they just can't move Jeff, they can't play. I didn't expect them to, I actually expected them to skip there. They done goofed. Yeah, they done goofed. I did not expect them to play there. I thought they were going to read the fact that that was going to uh, get occupied. I expected them to move a Jeff. That was a huge misplay by them. And you can see what the play line is here. Hope Summers lets you kind of really pump down some power. Um, yeah, very straightforward win there. Wow, we're getting really screwed here. Iron Lad is, uh... Iron Lad getting hit with that uh, Iceman has been pretty detrimental to us. We've been able to get nothing happening here. Nothing going at all. Okay, that's blocked off. Pretty good. We're probably going to want a vision. 
Doctor Doom's really good into Washington, D.C. I would love to see Dream Theater live, yeah. And Frenzy, I'm glad you enjoyed that combo, yeah. I think the deck feels okay. I don't think it's great. It hasn't felt great. I'm wondering if this is going to be Onslaught right... We're going to put a lot of power here on Hope Summers. We've already snapped. Could be playing like Dazzler. These decks have been running uh, Spectrum as a finisher as well. Okay, Nightcrawler dies. Not a big deal. Elsa would be fine, as would Silk. Has to be Onslaught, right? Nine energy this last turn. We don't have initiative for Eliath. Okay, we did the right thing. Good. Quality win there. Quality win there. Having nine energy on that last turn is pretty crazy. Honestly, it's pretty crazy.